Hello and welcome. Today I want to walk you through a strategy that I've built on the back of being unable to really build content strategies myself. Um, so just like you, I'm just a business owner. I don't do strategy. I'm capable of it, I just don't enjoy it. So I tend to have partners that I can hand the content strategy off to as and when clients need something a bit more rigid. However, like all of us, I'm keen to just get started on things and I don't like getting hung up on strategy and actually, with video, it's reasonably easy to create something that just works in a reasonably short amount of time, as long as we're covering the things that matter. So that's why I built the YouTube framework. I'm going to talk you through what that is, and over the next 20 minutes or so, you'll find out how you can build a content strategy that is suited to video, but is suitable for any other kind of content that will drive conversion for your audience. I would caveat all of this with if you feel like you need something a bit more robust, reach out. We do have partners in place who can help you do workshops and understand a little bit more about your ideal audience, what they need from you and how you get there. So without any further ado, let's dive into things. I want to help you create content that converts. It sounds really simple, but when we sit down to do it, it's a bit of a pain, right? We all know that it's possible to do. We've seen lots of other people doing it. However, when you actually start putting that into practice, where do we start? I don't even, Paul, I get this all the time. Paul, I love the idea of what you do. I want to work with you, but what videos do we create? I don't even know where to start. That's what we're going to fix today. We're going to give you the starting point. We're going to give you the end point. We're going to give you a framework to move between the two. A little bit about me. So um, as, as many of you will probably know, I'm a proud father of two young hoodlums. I've got a six-year-old who's going on 15. I've got a nine-month-old who seems like it's acceptable for him to walk already. And that is pretty much my full-time job. Um, in and around that, when I get some spare time to myself, then I'm in the office helping my clients get ideas out of their head, down into video, and out to their socials. I enjoy, I love helping people make better decisions, better choices in order for them to maximize their impact on the world. That sounds really grandiose, but actually it's really simple in practice. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, I like to be able to either help you make those decisions or point you to the people who can help you make the right decisions. That's what I do. Question for you. Obviously, this is normally a live session that I run, but something to consider as we're going through this next 10, 15 seconds or so is, why haven't you done more with video yet? Have you started it? Have you trialed it? Do you like it? If you do use it, why aren't you doing more with it? Because you wouldn't be here if you weren't already using it, right? So for a lot of people, it sits around these areas. Anxiety, you know, people don't want to be on video. We don't like seeing ourselves on video. It's not natural. It's not, it's not normal, right? It's bad enough being in front of a mirror, let alone recording yourself to be out there on the internet. It's scary. <clears throat> Time, right? Absolutely. As the owner of a business, there are a billion hats to wear. We rarely have time to do any of the stuff that we thought we'd get into business to do, let alone recording video for social media. Technology is bloody horrible. Even I hate it, right? But, you know, again, technology is something that does put a lot of people off. The, the technology to do this is getting simpler, but it's not easy to use. There is a learning curve. And let's be honest, you've got enough to do as it is. Complexity of the project putting all the parts together, so thumbnails and graphics, uploading things, adding content to your posts that have the video on, your text that goes with that, uh, understanding how it all fits together. Imposter syndrome is a big one. You know, who am I to be talking as, as an expert, as a, as a thought leader or an influencer? You know, you don't have to use those terms if you don't like it. The point of the matter is, if you're trying to create authority with your audience so that they come to you when the time is right, you've got to position yourself as that credible person in their eyes. And that can be uncomfortable for a lot of people, even though they naturally do it in day-to-day -day networking. And then affordability and accessibility, right? So gone are the days, um, I'll say this now, gone are the days when you needed expensive resources to get all this done. But there are still two barriers, which are, there is the cheap version of doing things, which people trial and it doesn't come back right. Use an AI to, to clip their videos up, that sort of thing. People from Fiverr and Upwork who are great at what they do, but need a lot of guidance. So you try and cut costs to work with those guys. It doesn't quite work out. We give up. Likewise, got people at the other end of the spectrum who work with big agencies. 
and they charge a fortune. It can take a long time for them to come back because they're probably using third parties to process the content, etc. Where's the middle ground? I can assure you. So me, you know, I get asked a lot of times, does, does it work? Does video work for you, Paul? Uh, does it work? For, can it work for me? And the answer is yes, because I've seen it work in so many different industries already. There isn't really a limitation on what sort of industry it doesn't work on. But my preference, my, the way I work is to help people around B2B because I think that's much, much harder than B2C. Anybody can do B2C. Get yourself on TikTok, film yourself with your product or you're you know, talking about the problems that your audience have. And we apply the same sort of ter strategy to video. However, it has to be much more thought about and careful because you're talking usually to much more senior people. So uh, my background is 15 years in retail and policing. I have no sales and marketing background. I'm proud of that because I think it gives me a different perspective on things. It makes me much more like my clients. So I joined a, an AI SaaS tech startup back in 2020, and we figured out how to use video to create more than 200 opportunities in 18 months, personally. right? That's not the team, that's me. And that was valued at 25 million ARR. At the end of that time, I thought, brilliant. This is a really complex product, really high ticket, really senior leaders, really niche, dry analytics. I've got to be able to do this with other businesses. So I left, started Javelin Content Up, and in our first year, we did six figures, right? And I've got lots of clients. We're, we've, we're, we're ticking over 40 clients now inside 14 months now. It's been incredibly successful, and lots of our clients are now reaping the rewards of working with video consistently, um, getting a lot of positive feedback, even clients who have high-ticket coaching um, services, clients who are in tech and, and lots of other spaces. So it absolutely works if you put the work in. Where do you start? And this is the, this is the bit we all struggle with. We're all sat there staring at a keyboard, staring at the camera, trying to record ourselves talking about our own business. Wow, that is hard to do. That is super hard to talk well about your own business because when you start to talk about it, you get lost because you get lost in the detail. You want to see everything at once. You want everything to come across exactly right. Stop. So today I'm going to show you how to create a whole strategy in less than an hour, right? No expensive consultants, no expensive strategy, no complexity. It's very, very, very simple and something you can visualize today in less than 20 minutes. But the answer starts with you. It's in your head already. It's not with me. It's not with a strategy consultant. It's you. So imagine that you have a successful YouTube channel. You're 18 months in the future. Your channel's bringing in thousands of viewers and they're all, not all of them, but a good chunk of them are qualified leads who are then coming down the funnel into your inbox. Brilliant. The dream scenario. And yes, bear with me because I know not everybody wants a YouTube channel. You might change your mind after watching this video, however, and I would advise you to think about it carefully. So YouTube's quite a unique channel, right? and I have only gotten into YouTube really in the last year. Well, why I like YouTube is it allows you to curate your home screen your channel and position videos on there in a way that drives your audience down a funnel. And that's pretty unique. So if you create videos for LinkedIn, you post them up, yes, they're there, yes, they're in your profile, but people have kind of got to go looking for them and they might not come across them in the right order. So that's why with LinkedIn, there's a slightly different strategy of creating those videos in terms of how you get them out to people. But bear with me. If we think about it from a YouTube perspective first, You've got your own customized playlists and within those playlists you have customized videos and you can include other people's videos and links and stuff in there as well. So, but take a moment to just think about what yours might look like if you were gonna do it. That successful YouTube channel that's out there. And what we know is that customers buy in stages. They need to go through the process. Some of them might bypass the first stage or so because they've already done their homework, but in general, we need to take them through awareness so pumping content out there that helps them identify you, that know that you exist, and to create an emotional attachment between you and them so that they know that you're alike, you're similar people, that your business is built on a brand that they, they gel with. Then it's consideration. So understanding your products and services, but not by advertising those necessarily, but by helping them understand how you'd solve their problems helping them know that you understand their exact situation, their challenges. You've probably been them, and now you want to solve their problems. 
again, doesn't have to include your solutions and services because by showing that you understand them, they become aligned to you and they will come to you, hopefully, to help solve those problems. But I'm not saying don't talk about your solutions and services. It just comes further down the line. And then decision making, right? And this is the key bit that a lot of people miss out on. Helping them understand why it is that they should, if they've got a short list of businesses or vendors or services or products, why is it that you and your product or your service are the only one that they should come to? What makes you stand apart? Why would they not come to you? And you convert an audience by breaking that down. So on our YouTube channel that we've, we've got in our heads, you have playlists. Consider what those playlists might look like. What are the playlist titles to start with? And are they aimed at a particular industry or job title? You know, if you think about your ideal audience, what do they look like? You might have multiple verticals. You might have multiple job roles that you aim at. Do the playlists speak to cross an entire vertical or do they speak to specific job titles? And that's, this is unique to you. So nobody can answer this but you. You need to think about how that works. And you need to set up those playlists so that they speak to the different stages in your customer's journey one at a time. Then that playlist leads into the next playlist, leads into the next playlist. And at the end of it all, if they follow your content through, they get in touch because they know you can help them and they like what you do, believe in you and they're aligned with you. And at that point, all they've got is what I call the SFQs, the, the silly <clears throat> questions, right? The things that you haven't answered anywhere else because they're unique to that person or that business. And that's usually when I'm talking with my clients or, or people I'm we're networking with, that's when I see the penny drop because they're starting to visualize that. And actually, that seems really simple. I'm creating a pile of playlists. The playlists have got to convert people. If I create playlists that do that job, title them in the right way, and I create the content that goes into those, right. And that's essentially it, right? Like that is the key to everything. Everyone's different. One of my clients there at the bottom, Joel Leach, says that no one knows your chessboard like you. So you can get lots of advice from people. You can get advice from lots of consultants and strategists. And they have a lot of experience. But ultimately, nobody knows your business, your playbook, your chessboard like you do. So you've got to have a big part in that and... You can fast forward all of that by starting to build it out yourself in this way. So consider what the titles of those videos might be in those playlists. How many playlists have you got? Start to plan this out somewhere. It might be a piece of paper, might be a spreadsheet, whatever makes you comfortable. Something you can refer back to. Start to build out what just the playlists look like. And what sort of things, what boxes do you need to tick at each stage of, of the playlist? in order to convert your audience? What sort of things do they, if you think about it from the customer's perspective, your ideal audience perspective, what's going through their head when they're watching this? What do they need to prove out for, for what you're saying to be true for them to come to you? And also, and this is really important, consider what you need to tell them so that you can help disqualify people who are a bad fit. You don't want everybody coming into that funnel. You want people who align with you but are also a good fit because that'll make sure that you're productive and efficient with your pipeline and you're only talking to the people that are reasonably well qualified and you're not talking to anybody who you would just be wasting time on. Be transparent. Doesn't mean you need to air all of your dirty laundry, but it does mean you need to identify ways in which that you would identify somebody as a bad fit for you. And talking about it on video is actually much more acceptable than writing that in text because you don't come across as patronizing or you know, any of the other negative emotions that might, people might perceive based on a written post alone. But importantly, make sure you write all that down. Start creating the playlists, write them down, and put them in a place where A, you can be held accountable. So, you know, somebody within the business can hold you accountable that you're doing this. Mention it on LinkedIn that you're going to start creating new content, that you're going to start following this, this strategy that you've created and, you know, to ask for feedback from people as they see videos and content coming out. And again, I will state this again, it doesn't need to be just for video, right? You can do this with writing. You can do this with posts and blogs and articles. It works, right? But think about it in terms of the way we're describing it. Translate it to whatever medium you want to work with. I would highly recommend using video first and creating other blogs and content on the back of that video, right? That's important. That's efficient. And it's at this point that you should now be considering what the videos look like within those playlists. So that's the next stage of this, is to 
really fully flesh out those playlists, the videos within them, what order do they need to go in, what are the titles of those videos that you need to create in order to take people on that journey from one end of that pipeline to the other. There's no right and wrong answers, right? Well, there are some wrong answers, but you know, right depends on you, your clients, your business, your model, your brand, your tone of voice, all of those sorts of things. But consider that and then flesh that playlist framework out one at a time. Add your videos to it. You don't need a huge volume of videos. It should be, you know, maybe 10 videos in each playlist. I don't know. It depends on you. Again, depends how long your videos are. Depends whether you're bite-sizing them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But start to flesh that out. You should be able to create the idea for your channel, your playlists, and your videos within an hour. And that really is it. Okay, there's nothing much more complex than that. It's quite simple to do. I wanted it that way on purpose. Like I said at the beginning, it doesn't replace you having a, a, a full content strategy in place at some point in the future. It is a great way for small business owners or those just starting to get really involved in content to get something out there that is interesting to their audience that converts them and educates them. If you have any questions, my details are on the screen. You can DM me on LinkedIn. Paul at javelincontent.com is, is my personal email address reach out and love to have a chat with you about the strategy and what you want to achieve with video going forwards.